And the campus of the University of Maryland here in College Park. Are they going to fear the turtle? Well, if you're South Carolina, probably not. We got a pair of former national champions with us for the number eight South Carolina Gamecocks, the number four Maryland Terrapins. It's the earliest top 10 matchup in women's college basketball history, and we are happy to be with you here courtside. Beth Mullins, along with Debbie Antonelli, some terrific freshmen in the starting yeah. lineup for both these sides, Debbie, but in this kind of environment, I think they're going to look to the veterans first. Well, you got to go with what you know, right? And you're not really sure how the freshmen, even though they're talented, are going to respond to this environment. But we know how Ty Harris from South Carolina is going to respond. She's their leader at the top of the floor. She's already won a national championship. She's on the Wooden Award preseason top 30. She is a two-way player. She can score. She can defend her position. She runs Dawn Staley's tempo. Kyla Charles, she's a preseason All-American. Last year's Big Ten Player of the Year. She plays big in this matchup with South Carolina. She can score inside. She is a three-point threat. She has all the tools, and both of those players have outstanding freshmen to play alongside them. Home whites from Maryland on a whiteout Sunday afternoon. South Carolina in their road black jerseys. Half of the starters out there, folks, rookies, and their first time in the big environment and the bright lights of a top 10 showdown, including jumping at center number four, Aaliyah Boston, who will man the middle today for South Carolina, and all she did in her debut was mess around and get a triple-double. Both these teams will play man-to-man -man defense, and they both will extend their pressure full court at times. Boston gets a touch. Maryland was hoping to get at least a couple of bodies on her, and the second opportunity for Kiki Herbert Harrigan. And as you check out the lineup for the Terrapins, their entire starting five is back, but that uh, doesn't stop Brenda Freeze from going with a couple of freshmen, Diamond Miller and Ashley Awusu, because of a couple of injuries, the freshmen will run the point. And South Carolina will try and get in her head and get in her face a little bit today, Debbie. Well, they've got multiple players with length that can defend her. They have plenty of quickness on the perimeter. There you see the three freshmen as well for South Carolina. Cook, Beal, and Boston. And a good start for the visitors. Two possessions for Dawn Staley, both times. Two feet in the paint for Aaliyah Boston. She is their go-to at 6-5 on the inside, and she has the capability of finishing left and right. Maryland could have the advantage on the perimeter shooting the three with this player right here, Taylor Mikesell, off the mark, set a school record last year for the Terps from beyond the line. Well, she makes 95 threes last year. She's their best three-point weapon this year. Watch Aaliyah Boston, 6'5", part of this number one recruiting class, gets great position inside. Look how she seals in a mismatch with a smaller player. Easy target the way she frames up to the ball. South Carolina, number one. Stanford, number two. Maryland, number three. And there's the drive and the finish for Owusu. The freshman out of Woodbridge, Virginia. 18 points, nine assists and zero turnovers in her first game, a win over Wagner. She's a really exciting player. Re Rebecca Lobo and I agree on one thing. She reminds us of Chelsea Gray. Mm. We probably agree on a lot of things, me and Rebecca, but Chelsea Gray is a terrific player in the WNBA. She's got that side, does Owusu. Former star at Duke and also spending some time with the U.S. national team. Nice catch and the finish by Boston. They are having their way in the paint early. And this is what Maryland wants to do. Run, run, run is what Brenda Freeze told the team pregame. Well, Maryland would like to double Boston on the inside, but she's catching the ball so deep in the paint at the front of the rim that it's, it's too far to bring the double and it takes too long. Too much distance to cover. There's the double right there. Make her become a passer. See if somebody can hit a three. They swing it around to Zaya Cook. No. Beal fighting on the glass. A held ball. Held ball and it will go the other way. Dawn Staley now in her 20th year of coaching. The last 12 of those at South Carolina. 
a winner of the 2017 National Championship. She will be the head coach for the USA Olympic team in Tokyo next summer. Dawn's already done something that the great Pat Summit hasn't done, and that is uh, won four consecutive SEC tournament titles. Coach Summit won three. Of course, the legendary coach at Tennessee. Rusu, the tough spin. Weak side, Boston is there. Ty Harris is on the all the watch list for National Player of the Year honors. Now Maryland switching on every ball screen action. And this is how they take advantage of it. They get it inside to Boston on a mismatch. She is a big problem early. I think Dawn Staley is accustomed to coaching big players on the inside, like an Asia Wilson or a Elena Coates. The response from Kyla Charles, the senior who is the preseason Big Ten Player of the Year and the top returning scorer in the league. And a five second violation will turn it over. Really good ball pressure by Maryland. They get the stop and then they lock down one pass away. Here's Brenda Fries in her 18th season, winners of the 2006 National Championship. And three different trips to the Final Four. Arusu knocks it down. Okay, out of the corner of her eye, she looks to see how she's being defended in that ball screen action, and she knew she had the 15-footer. With the shot blocker, Boston Beth, you cannot over-penetrate into the paint. Boston will block your shot. Arusu, weak side rebound, terrific size. Well, she sees the floor so well, Arusu. I mean, she's in total command of the tempo and understands what Brenda Fries wants. She's got a nifty handle. And Brenda Fries didn't uh, think that was a foul, so play on. Yep. First uh, first career turnover, I think, right there. After yes. She didn't have any in the opener. Watch right here how she comes off this screen. And she gets enough separation. See, Boston doesn't step up. She's sagging in the paint, and that allows Owusu to come off that screen looking to score. She's a six-footer. She's going to have some uh, good vision over a lot of point guards she'll face this year. Some pressure full court. And that's something that you're going to see more of from Maryland is oh, nice. full court pressure. Nice spin from Cook to find Boston. I mean, every possession, Boston has had a touch. Every single possession. What a start for her with eight points here in the first five minutes. Too much dribbling and not going anywhere with it. He's young, she'll learn. I would like to welcome the ESPN audience to the Xfinity Center in College Park. An early season top 10 showdown and a good one. Number eight, South Carolina on the road to take on number four, Maryland. Both easy winners in their first games of the season. And the story so far has been the interior play for South Carolina of freshman Aaliyah Boston. She's got eight of their 10 points. And what, what an opportunity, really, for, for both of these two teams. And Brenda Fries, she's been in, in a lot of big games. She knows this is a big opportunity for her young squad early on. This is what she talked about in the locker room. For every successful shot fake equals plus five off of any sprints in practice. We're going to run, we're going to run, and we're going to run some more and we're going to show them who is the team that is in better shape. All right, who is the team has put in the most work with their conditioning, made or miss. And right now, they got their hands full with the young Boston. Aaliyah Boston, part of that number one recruiting class for South Carolina at 6'5 on the inside. Every possession so far in the game, Dawn Staley's team has put the ball in her hand. She catches it with two feet deep in the paint. She's a tremendous shot blocker on the other end, so she influences Maryland's ability to get inside. She is taking over the game early, and this is just a young player, a young freshman, Aaliyah Boston. 
She's the quarterback of the defense. She's a great target on the interior. They featured her early. She's catching the ball so deep that Maryland doesn't even have time to get over and double and turn her into a passer. But that's one of the things they're going to want to do coming off this timeout. Four of five to start out. The freshman at 6'5 from the U.S. Virgin Islands, but went to Worcester Academy in Massachusetts for her uh, prep school days and debuted in their win against Alabama State with a triple-double, the first ever in NCAA women's basketball history. And it's the top-ranked freshman class in the country with Cook and Bay up. Beal both in the starting lineup alongside Aaliyah Boston. How about that? Numbers 3, 4, 10, and 11 with Leticia Ami here too will be coming off the bench today. Well, it's impressive. I mean, this is a, a group that is versatile. They're highly competitive. Dawn Staley has spoken to their IQ and how they've raised the level of practice every day. And they've added to their depth, certainly, but they're very talented. They understand how to play. And of course, Dawn Stanley knows something about coaching talented players. Yes. Maryland not far behind when it comes to rankings for freshman classes. Brenda has hauled in a couple of number ones before and a number three class this year, including a pair that are in the starting lineup today in Diamond Miller and Ashley Owusu. Stanford with that number two class, including the overall number one player coming out of high school, Haley Jones. I mean, how lucky are we and fans treated to an early November matchup uh, in the first time in history where we had this level of competition this early in the season. And Debbie, you don't think it's too early to start talking about NCAA seeding because when we talk about strength of schedule and when we talk about head-to-head -head matchups, these are two teams that could be right in the mix for ones and twos There's when no the selection committee gets together at the end of the year. There's no question. I mean, we're going to talk about this game in February. We might as well start talking about it now because implications for seeding all over this game. Both these teams are projected to win their respective leagues. They're both in the top ten. They've got talented freshmen. they got coaches that have been there and won national championships. There's a lot of fun in the building today. Well, after Maryland forced the turnover, they gave it right back in an explosive move by Bree Beal. She'll earn a trip to the free throw line. The freshman from Rock Island, Illinois, who Coach Don Staley says is extremely cerebral and brings all the intangibles to this freshman class. And you know, when you, when you get an injection of, of um, energy and, and talent like this, it really ramps everybody's games up every day. Well, you have to have a measure of focus about what you do, right? Both teams with a young club, with a scatter report that's very detailed, something that's new to freshmen, understanding how important the scatter reports are. Uh, both these teams scored 100 points in their first game. I mean, that's exciting. There's a, there's a lot of firepower. Uh, and it's going to be exciting to watch how these two teams get better and develop in their respective leagues. Well, that was one of the things that uh, Brenda Fries talked with us about today at Shoot Around. How do you get a, a team of superstars to all come together and, and, and play together towards the common goal and the good of the team over the good of the individual? And she really likes uh, the track that this team is on already. Well, Kyla Charles had to do everything last year, right? Now this year she's got some help. And she's got lots of weapons around her. She's a preseason top five AP All-American selection, and she's the Big Ten Player of the Year last year. And she's number five at White, who just missed that last shot. Harris bumped on the drive. And Ty Harris has a great demeanor about her on the top of the offense for Dawn Staley. She understands what I call the three W's, who to get the ball to, when, and where. And when you can answer why, then you're elite. And I think that's where she is with her game. On all the preseason watch lists for Player of the Year and the Nancy Lieberman Award for the best point guard in the country, she is one of two players still on this roster that were on their national championship team several years ago. Like the full court pressure. 
the one thing about full court pressure is you got to make sure you match up on the back side. Watson was able to tip it to himself and then hit for three. You'll note the two lines on the floor this year. The men have moved their three-point line back. The women have not. That's a shame. I like one line I on like the floor. I like line, too. Easier for everybody. I think most of the women's teams spot up behind the, the, the men's line anyway, which is the FIBA line. Good defensive set right there to force the turnover for Maryland. And the first foul on Kiki. Blair Watson, a player that before her injury was a 14-point a game performer. Last year she started, and I think this year she's set to have a big year. That's a nice play. Tap it to yourself, get your feet behind the line. A tremendous offensive player. At the ACL a couple years ago. And you know, now they're better shooters on the drive. Now I think Kyla Charles. Beth, I'm telling you, Kyla Charles on the elbow, isolated the way Brenda Priest can get her the ball in that position in the slot. Forget about it. You're not going to be able to guard her there. She's going to be able to make a play. That's two possessions in a row. She missed the 15-footer. This time she makes one. Lily Grissett and the held ball. That'll stay this way. One of the things for Dawn Staley over the years that has somewhat been a question mark for them is their ability to shoot the three. And this is going to be a question mark that's going to come forward again this season. Who's going to be that three-point threat to help space the floor against the incredible depth and skill on the front line? Terrific drive by Harris. Well, the other thing of note here with Aaliyah Boston out right now, Catching a breather, they did not have the same advantage inside. Well, and look for Maryland, same thing. Like without Shanice Lewis and without Zoe Young, two point guards, they're out hurt. They're out with knee injuries. Taylor Mikesell has to handle the backup point guard responsibilities, which takes her away from being a threat to shoot the triple. Ty Harris has sensed an opportunity here, so two straight drives, one with the finish and one to draw the foul. Oh, it's a smart play. Uh, you see on the end of the bench, Shanice Lewis over there with Zoe Young for Brenda Freeze. So now you're down two point guards that affects your depth on the top of the floor. Taylor Mikesell has to back up Owusu, who's a freshman. Not a good pass by Herbert Harrigan. And then Watson returns the favor. Harris dunk down the floor. Good rebound by Destiny Henderson. Herbert Harrigan dunked that one no good. And then a foul fighting for the rebound. Shakira Austin, I think, picked up that foul. She is yet to get going for Maryland at 6'5. She's their size on the inside. That is the fifth team foul as well on the Terps. So we're set at the line to shoot a couple. Both coaches have already gone nine deep in their bench early on. I like it. An opportunity for a lot of different folks to get a run today. Brenda wanted to run, run, run. We also spoke to Don today at shoot around. They'd like a little more controlled tempo. Well, I think uh, South Carolina has dominated the tempo in the early part of the game because of the way they came out and threw the ball to the paint each time to Aaliyah Boston, their 6'5 center, who already has eight points in the game. She's not on the floor right now. Charles. Can't guard nice from the elbow. To the right for the lay-in. Can't do it, Beth. Can't guard her from the elbow. That's a good take. First step. Yes, and a yep. one hard dribble that goes somewhere to the rim. That's all you need. You see too many people dribble uh, east and west, don't you, instead yeah. of north and south. Yep. Let me here on the drive and the foul. How about this move? 
This is the third time that Brenda Fries has run her offense to get the ball right here in a scoring position. And look at the nice separation move, the finish at the rim. Beautiful take by Kyla Charles. You know what else that was? In her pregame speech, she said every successful shot fake takes a sprint off of practice tomorrow. That was a successful shot fake right there. There's a little added incentive on those ball fakes and shot fakes today. Letitia Ami here, reclassified last year in January, came to South Carolina. She was injured with that knee injury. And she is a part of the number one recruiting class for Dawn Staler with four players in the top 11. They've got the lead and they've got it thanks to the free throw line. They're six for eight. Maryland without an attempt here in the first quarter. Got a lot of three-point shooters on the floor right now for Maryland, and they just don't handle the pressure of South Carolina's D. Well, Tuesday night, we've got the first game of the Phil Knight Invitational at the Moda Center in Portland. It's Oregon and Memphis, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on ESPN and your ESPN app. And will uh, the Tigers have James Weissman with them? They're without a Leah Boston on the floor for South Carolina, Maryland has gone with their small lineup. Let's see if it can result in some up-tempo offensive play. Charles behind the line. Won't go, and Harris sinking hold for the final shot of the quarter here. With this lineup on the floor, Kyla Charles is playing the five position. So she's got to defend the post player. That's what I would try to pick up a foul on her. Harris blocked at the buzzer. And that's the end of the quarter. South Carolina 18-15 on the road and up early on 4th Rank Maryland. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball was brought to you by Ameriprise Financial. With the right financial advice, life can be brilliant. Exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Ameriprise Financial. With the right financial advice, life can be brilliant. Opening quarter here in College Park Top 10 Showdown. The earliest we've ever had one on the calendar in women's college basketball. And a good start for the freshman, Aaliyah Boston. Eight points to lead the way for Carolina. Kyla Charles, the preseason Big Ten Player of the Year, six points for Maryland. And here is Kyla. Aaliyah Boston is also back out on the floor, number four in black in the middle at 6'5". And a chance to have a major impact this season for the Gamecocks. South Carolina, big advantage in the paint, plus six on the glass. Four of those offensive rebounds. Oh, Dawn Staley isolating her quickness in the Henderson matchup against Owusu to see if they can get something going. There's a good defensive play by Brianna Jones. Excuse me, by Stephanie Jones. Brianna's her sister. Played at Maryland. Stephanie has the strip. Owusu going right at Boston in the block. She had a triple-double in her very first game for South Carolina, and that included double-digit blocks. Yeah, you got to be careful about over-penetrating right here because look at Boston, move her feet, stays off the contact, gets separation, and does a nice job of making a play. Now, the 10 blocks that she had in the Alabama State game, I watched them on Synergy. Six of them she blocked into their transition game. If she can do that consistently, that just adds another element to their defensive layers. Oh, nice behind the back by Miller and rejected again by Boston. Another offensive rebound for South Carolina and a held ball, and it will stay this way. See how quickly South Carolina, with their team speed, is going the other way off this defensive play. Talking about second level layers. <laughs> Did not see that in high school. <laughs> and sent back. 
by Boston, her second swat. with the ball at times, seven turnovers, but Maryland has not made them pay. They've only cashed in one takeaway. Watch Stephanie Jones working hard to front Boston on the block. The drop off inside, and that's blocked by Charles. Here comes Arusu with the push. Really good help defense. Look how quickly Henderson closes that space on Mike Sell. You can't give her much room. They don't want her taking the three. They'll run her off the line and make her do just that. Miss the layup. It'll stay with Maryland. See that little bit of contact with Henderson just was enough to throw Mike Sell off on their drive to the hoop. And Jones dragged the pivot foot. Cook, one of those freshmen for Dawn Staley, doing a really good job defensively right now. She and Henderson can really change the tempo with their quickness. Harris, the nice dish. Cook could knock that down. Good help again by Boston. Charles, mid-range, no. Really good contest by Saxton. Cook. Good job running the floor to fill the lane to get the three on two break. Well, it's South Carolina's defense, it's allowing them to get out on the break. Tough shot, got it. Pretty step back. You know, I'm not feeling like Maryland has played well. South Carolina certainly has influenced that, but you know, Arusu having to make that tough shot. I think Dawn Sale would take that tough, too. Catch and using the backboard, Victoria Saxton. I've been to two South Carolina practices so far this season, and Saxton by far, to me, is the most improved player for Dawn Staley. She's, Coach Staley agreed with you. Yeah, she's active. She's, she's playing with a high motor. She's got an IQ about her. She's got great length. Look at her get in that space right there and, and without putting the ball on the floor. Makes a nice play off the window. Beal comes back into the lineup here for South Carolina. Good defensive job on the uh, door screen. Jones tries to cross. Boston bothers another one. And then Maryland will grab it right back. Well done by Miller in transition. Will she be rewarded? So far, Debbie, good job by the South Carolina defense to take the three away from the Terps. They're just one for five, and Mikesell in particular has been quiet out there. Well, I remember the one three they had was Blair Watson who yep. tapped it to herself on an offensive rebound. So, yes, defending the three-point line has been good because the only three they got was off an offensive rebound. It's the defense of Destiny Henderson defending. And as soon as we talk about the outside shot, just inside the line for two, Jones. I wonder if it's confusing for the players sometimes with their footwork when they see two lines on the floor. Terps have it. Faith Masonis, another one of the freshmen from New Jersey. Jones running the floor, and Boston is able to clean it up. Oh, Leah Boston, really. I mean, one of the things that Maryland wanted to do was make Boston run. Well, she's doing a great mm. job of owning the middle of the floor. That's her fourth block in the first half. Masonis no good for three, and Jones will be whistled for the foul. Second. Remember, coming off a triple-double in her first outing as a debut, I'm, hey, what was more impressive, Aaliyah Boston's triple-double or Cole Anthony's 34 for North oh, Carolina? I like a triple-double, you know. 
that's a, that's a pretty solid all-around game. She's showing us some of that. She was scoring early in the first quarter, now defending in the second quarter. I have a feeling that we're going to see a lot of Coral Anthony. Yeah, we, we are. <laughs> but we're going to see a lot of this freshman class as well. A Wusu, no. Mikesel for three. Around and out. 95 made threes last year for Mikesel. She made more than Christy Tolliver did. Christy Tolliver, of course, the great Maryland player on that 06 national championship team who's one of many Back in the house. Look at that. Banners. That is royalty. That, oh. that, that, that's everybody in the rafters over there on the sidelines. Crystal Langhorn sitting next to Christy Tolliver. Are they sitting on the Maryland bench over there? No, I think uh, those are the uh, pricey seats over there. <laughs> they're you know, big time WNBA players. They can afford those. <laughs> Good. Spinning. That one's blocked. Second chance and a foul. big game when you can get these folks back and of course Tolliver uh, not only a national championship ring but now WNBA championship too with Washington this past summer let's see Thomas is here right yes Langhorn's here Walker Kimbrough they're, they're in the back row there and of course there's Langhorn the second all-time leading scorer sitting right next to her uh, Marissa Coleman a late scratch for the game we were looking forward to seeing her also and all those names the banners are hanging here from the, uh, from the ceiling of the Xfinity Center. Both these teams, national championship pedigrees in Boston. Oh, another big block, that's her fifth. Beal with the burst. Oh, they've missed a few layups today. I'll tell you what, there's some toughness in the Masonis game. One of 10 kids, that kid knows how to fight for what she wants. And she's made some back, play, back row plays early for Maryland. Boston is all over the place. She's got a big time game. She's got five block shots. Don't over penetrate. Don't bring it in here. Not today. Maybe not ever. Kevin, we are excited about what we've seen so far from Boston. And of course, uh, all of America a buzz about Oregon's stunning win over Team USA last night. In an exhibition, Sabrina Ionescu went to town, 30 points. And uh, she has a chance, Debbie, to get to 2,000, 1,000, and 1,000 by the end of her career. Which no one has done. That would be very impressive. Uh, she is a uh, Fun player to watch, what I call a hashtag ticket selling player. Mm -hmm. You want to buy a ticket on the road to see Sabrina play? You want to tune in when she's on the tube? You know, we talk a lot about uh, football players that have a Heisman moment. Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if that was her Olympic moment last night. And will there be a collegiate player, maybe a couple perhaps, that will have a shot, that will get a look from Don Stanley and, and the selection committee for the team for the Olympic squad next summer. Now, you know, Don Stanley doesn't get to pick her own team, right? Yep. Yep. I mean, there's a, a committee that does that. However, I got to believe Don would have some influence over why and who. And when you take a look at Sabrina Ionescu and studying her game and watching her through the years and watching what a great leader she has become for Oregon, this is who she reminds me of. Vision like Sue Bird, mental toughness of Tarasi, the mid-range jumper of Simone, and the competitiveness of Tamika Ketchings. Very good company, all Olympic gold medalists. I think she's tremendous, and we'll, she'll certainly, maybe she did audition. But there'll be another player in the SEC that will be auditioning for uh, a spot on the uh, USA yeah. team. That's Kennedy Carter at Texas A&M. I'm sure Lauren Cox is another player at Baylor. Yeah. 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 
foul. It, see, it, what, it was a great win. Nothing to take away, certainly, for the Ducks. But we will say in Team USA's defense, no Brianna Stewart, no Elena Deladon, no Asia Wilson, and no Angel yeah. Contra. And see, that's a big deal, okay? <laughs> Those are significant. <laughs> All right, but Angel McCautry is one that people might not think about, and, and, but the USA national team is going to need some help on their perimeter defense. Yeah. And whoever wants to play some D on the perimeter and step up their game that way might be a player the selection committee and Coach Don Staley would look at. It's going to be fun with the build-up to 2020 in Tokyo. It's a 6-0 run right now for South Carolina. They've opened this thing up. Under three minutes to go in the half. And South Carolina is scoring in the paint. They're defending at the rim. They're running Maryland off the three-point line. They've got the tempo where they want it. They have controlled the first half. Zaya Cook may have stepped on another player's foot. She looked like she was limping a little bit. Number one in black, we'll keep an eye on that. See, this is uh, South Carolina's pace. Basically walk the ball up the floor, play in the quarter court. Maryland's still continuing to switch. Boston with the spin and got it. Jerusu finds Charles. There's Boston right there to literally block the way. You referee the defense on this play, but while you're doing that, look at the footwork of Aaliyah Boston. Watch this move right here. She just creates a little space. That's a flop on the men's side. We don't have that in the women's game. But that's what that would have been called. And then on the other end, you see just a force at the rim in the paint. And if you bring it in there, you're going to have to deal with her. Aaliyah Boston, the freshman. She may uh, take a breather here the last two minutes. The drive. And Cook with the foul on Wushu. And this will be Maryland's first trip to the free throw line. First trip indeed. <laughs> going to be the second on Cook and Ashley Wusu, the freshman out of Woodbridge, Virginia. You know, when uh, we talked to Freeze about her new freshman point guard, she said, you know, all these great players that are sitting over there near their bench and their, their jersey numbers are up in the rafters, they all had wow moments, right, on a regular basis, even in practice every day. She says Ashley has those kind of moments at practice where she just sees things and makes plays that not everybody can do. Well, she has the skill set, but she also has the intangibles beyond her years because she wants to win and she's competitive. She's got poise and maturity about the way she goes about conducting, running the business on the top of the floor. Ty Harris tried to lob it inside, and oh boy, Wusu got a hand on it and then came down hard. Maryland with numbers, Miller from Mike Sol. Really good hustle by Mike Sol to chase that basketball down. And now Maryland scores, and they can get into some pressure. You know, I always describe teams in either a stop score mentality or a steal score mentality on the defensive end. This year, Maryland is going to be closer to a steal score mentality because their defense is better. And they'll be able to extend it on the drive, the foul. And that play right there, you got to step in and take a charge. It was so slow developing. On the other side, look at Owusu go down hard. And that allows the defensive play, Maryland, to get an easy two points. They haven't had many easy buckets in the first half. It's the second on Charles. And Brie Beal to the line. Hey, Tuesday night at 7 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app, we will have the exclusive reveal of the college football playoff top 25 rankings. Reese and the guys will break it all down for you. I think the big question, Debbie, is does LSU jump Ohio State? And how far does Alabama fall? And does someone else move into the yeah. top four? Well, I definitely have LSU jump in Ohio yes. State based on their win over Alabama yesterday. And, uh, I have Clemson uh, in the third three spot right now. 
With a four spot? Yeah, because Penn State lost too, right? Penn two State lost. Four lost. Lost to Minnesota, who's still undefeated. See, too much dribbling here. Pass the ball. Anderson. Harris. Oh, it's really, really nice for Don Staley to be able to get the ball to Harris's hands in moments like this. See, this right here with 40 seconds, you got a chance for a two for one. That's why Don Staley's using that timeout. Back in a moment. And we are back here in College Park. So the two for one scenario would mean you'd like to run a play here within 10 yeah. seconds. Less than 10. Right, so you draw two plays up with your team. Yeah. And this is something you have to practice. You can't just draw it up in your timeout. So they're not going for the two for one. Anderson. Oh, banks it in. Tough and too. Now the shot clock is off, so Maryland chooses. Mm -hmm. One see. shot, Brenda says. Let's see if Maryland can get Mike Stone open beyond the three-point line. Oh, dribble up way out top. Oh, Tyler Charles on the floor right now to go to. And they're gonna lose it. So South Carolina ends up with a two for one anyways. Not very good execution, but let's remember it's November. A lot to learn. Harris has five seconds to beat the clock. She'll get it up in time. Can't bank it in. Largest lead of the game right here for South Carolina. They're up 10 into the locker room. And Aaliyah Boston, 10 points, four rebounds, and five blocks already. 34-24 for the visitors. Now let's send it to Kevin Connors and Carolyn Peck in the studio with all the latest national news for you. Well, welcome back to the Big Ten on ESPN here in College Park, Maryland. A bit of a surprise here, a 10-point lead for number eight South Carolina over fourth-ranked Maryland. Beth Mowens, Debbie Antonelli, we knew there was some very good talent coming in with this freshman class, Debbie, and boy, is Aaliyah Boston putting on a show so far in this first half. Impressed, are you? Yeah. I would oh, say so. <laughs> I mean, lot. she's been fantastic. First of all, South Carolina did a terrific job establishing her in the paint. Two feet, double berry, catches at the rim. Too much for, for Maryland to deal with. She's five for six from the floor. Then in the second quarter, after she got her offense going, she got her defense going. She was able to block shots. Maryland continues to over-penetrate, possibly dribble too much. They've got to do a better job, does Maryland, in passing the basketball. Four assists and six turnovers in the first half. Only one trip to the free throw line and just one three-point basket. Yeah, Maryland was one for 10, and Kyla Charles was scoreless for the last 11 minutes and 20 seconds of the game, and now they're one for 11 from downtown. Okay, now look, the message is clear, right? Mike Sell, shoot the basketball when you're open. She is capable of making that Sabrina Ionescu range shot. The other thing that South Carolina has done, they've taken away the run game for Maryland. They've not been able to get out and run their fast break. Here's a chance right here. Charles will take it all the way. Bothered by Kiki. And now South Carolina with numbers. Harris unable to knock that down and a foul on the rebound. And two quick jumpers in transition by Dorn Staley's team. And uh, that's the way Maryland wants to play, right? If they can force South Carolina to take quick shots. That minimizes Boston's effect on the glass and on the boards and on the blocks. They were an awfully good shooting team last year today. And again, we stress early season, but not shooting it well. And off the turnover, they should get a couple here. They missed the layup. Cook, too quick. Not the shot that Dawn Staley wants. It's not the tempo they played the first half with. Well, you got Boston on the floor, and as effective as she has been all game, you got to play through her. It's going to be foul on Cook, and that will be her third. So the first player in a little bit of trouble. 
and that'll get Destiny Henderson quickly off the bench. And on the Maryland side, you know, we didn't see much from Shakira Austin. She had two early fouls, only played four and a half minutes. And keep your eye on Kyla Charles. She has two fouls as well for Maryland. Let's see if South Carolina will run something at her. Here she is with the ball. Another turnover. The leading returning scorer in the Big Ten. Uh, 17 a game. She has started today just three of 10 from the floor. I like that Maryland's picking up full court pressure right here. You've got to change the rhythm of your offense, and sometimes you can do that by changing what you do defensively. Drive and a foul deal to the line here for South Carolina. The one thing about Beal and watching her, because she can play one through four for Dawn Staley, is you are not going to knock her off her line when she's driving to the basket. She's just physically impressive with her 6'1 frame. She's strong, and the South Carolina people will tell you that you know, she reminds them a lot of Alicia Gray, who was on their national championship team and a former rookie of the year in the WNBA. Actually, South Carolina's at the last well, with Asia Wilson and Alicia Gray will have two rookie of the, rookies of the year in the WNBA recently. always aware now of where Boston is in the paint. Bothered on that shot. And the breakout for Ty Harris. They run Mike Sell off the three point line. They get a stop and then a leak out by Harris for an easy two forces a timeout for Brenda Freeze. A 14 point lead on the road for a young South Carolina squad. And getting easy buckets like this one. An 8-0 run here for South Carolina. They've held the Terps scoreless for the last uh, three and a half minutes, including an 0-4 start to this second half for Maryland. Fans along with Debbie Antonelli, top 10 matchup. With the seed implications already when we talk about where we expect these teams to be at the end of the season. A head-to-head -head win would be significant on the resume. Debbie, it's your way, way too early yeah. top 16. And this was before the game, so I have Maryland right now on the one line. Um, this is what I think will be the number one seeds. Oregon will be in Portland, Baylor will be in Dallas. I think Maryland will be in Fort Wayne. And what about Greenville, South Carolina? Stanford. That might have to be Stanford. Uh, and that means you're gonna get South Carolina because uh, they're gonna be the two seed. Uh, in my projections, UConn has a two seed. And then the threes, this is where it gets kind of interesting right now. And remember, this is early, but these are some projections. You know, NC State, West Moore gets his 700th win in his career tonight, today. UCLA, I think, is an impactful team out of the Pac-12. And then the four line, Arkansas, in my estimation, is the fourth best team in the SEC. And DePaul, I'm putting them on the four line because I think they're going to beat UConn December 16th in Chicago. And if that happens, if that happens, I think they'll be able to be one of the 16 teams that host. What will be interesting, of course, is you, you mentioned the regional sites. There is not a site in the Northeast this year, so UConn will have to travel well, you know, Fort Wayne, Greenville, Dallas, yeah. out west of Portland. Well, you say Northeast and I say Yukon Regional because it's either been in Albany or Bridgeport, which yeah. they all there, them and their fans can drive to. Don't sell Trenton short. That's a drive also, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Pull up by Lusu. Let's see if Maryland can discover their offense. After a 100-plus point game in their opener, they're on pace to barely across the 40 point mark today. South Carolina's defense has been terrific. In particular, Aaliyah Boston, the shot blocker. Here she is with a catch down low. And that's her first basket since the first quarter. No pressure on the high-low passer. Kiki Herbert Harrigan with her size can see right over the top of Maryland. And uh, Aaliyah Boston can catch everything. Go, 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 go. 
go inside against Boston. No, Austin denied. Beal off the crossover, takes some contact. And here comes Carlos. Should take it right at the big girl and one. Can this be a huge momentum shift for Maryland because they need something. This is a great take by the preseason All-American. In the open floor, gets a little contact. This is one time Boston doesn't try to block a shot. I almost thought she might have been trying to get out of the way, but Charles gets just a piece of the hip. Keeps her eyes up on the target, finishes with an and one opportunity. Boston will depart, that's her second foul. And Charles knocks it down. So three point play for Maryland, and they're back into single digits. Full court pressure. And all the decision making for Ty Harris will be important. There's no Boston on the floor right now. Good help by Charles. The offensive play followed by the defensive play. Gets to the middle of the floor. And good help coming over by Beal. And another breakaway. That's a big four point swing That's right a there. Huge job. Good response by South Carolina. And the ball is getting stuck too much. Dribbling for Maryland. It's not the way you typically see Brenda Fries' team, but here's what you got. A freshman point guard who has a scoring mentality. Harris weaving her way up court. Henderson and Beal on the trail. She'll stay on the left side of the floor and draw the foul. Diamond Miller, one of those freshmen for Maryland that has him at the number three ranked recruiting class for Brenda Fries. And Diamond Miller is long and athletic. You know, I think Maryland's overall decision making hasn't been that great in this game, Beth. You know, their spacing isn't what you typically see, but it's November. Maryland, by the way, will be the bonus the rest of the way. Just the start of the season in a top 10 matchup, 250 plus games on the ESPN networks. Of course, your home for the NCAA tournament and the Final Four in New Orleans this year as Harris is fouled on the drive. Yeah, I know Ty Harris going for some style points right there, Beth. But keep two hands on that. You might be getting the end one. We'll take the time out here with the teams. Five minutes to go in the third. Well, Tuesday night, it's the first game of the Phil Knight Invitational at the Moda Center in Portland, Oregon, and Memphis. Nine Eastern, six Pacific on ESPN and your ESPN app. Don't forget... Big week of women's hoops underway, too. Tomorrow night on ESPN2 at 7 o'clock, it's Tennessee, that new head coach Kelly Jolly, and that revamped Notre Dame lineup after they lost all five starters to the NBA draft. How about this opening week? Check your local listings, folks. On the ESPN networks, we've got Baylor, UConn, Louisville, North Carolina, Duke, Texas, all somewhere on your ESPN networks in the coming days. Not only did Notre Dame lose all five starters to the WNBA, the two most experienced players are out right now, Prohaska and Vaughn. So now there's seven scholarship players from up in the draw, so it really is a revamp in style and pace. In defense, everything will be a little bit different for them this year. South Carolina's D has deep. South Carolina's D has been terrific. Harris. Good cross court pass. Good handle. But is that a player that should be catching the ball on the move? Oh, no, again, decision making. Don't forget to our roster of games. You got the Jimmy V Classic next month. 
in January, we back Pat, as well as the Thursday Showcase returns, including the Baylor-UConn game and Stanford Oregon. In February, play for K, and then Big Mondays are back as well, including the an OSU Maryland game and a South Carolina UConn game. Terrific lineup for you all year long on the road to the final four of the national championship. And our two former national champs head to head here today. Things have gotten a little sloppy here in the second half for both these offenses and a trip to the line coming up for a Now I know. Notre Dame and UConn usually get all the conversation early, right? Notre Dame and UConn. But it's not about what they don't have. It's more about what other teams do have. This is a wide open year. How about the Pac-12? They, they have three teams going to the Final Four. Or four, they could. four different teams have they a chance. Could, but it, it'll be challenging because of the way seeding yeah. will have to take place based on the regionals. You also like the depth in the ACC and um, uh, the... Uh, that's easy, right? right? Three yeah. or four different teams that could get yeah. to the I, Final Four. I think those three leagues, the ACC, the SEC, and the Pac-12, could have a conference champion that's different from the tournament champion that's different from their Final Four representative. That would be something. Here's your preseason AP poll. Of course, Baylor, the defending national champs. They got long cuts back. Well, there were two uh, upsets earlier in the AP poll. Uh, Minnesota lost, and Texas lost to South Florida. Jose Fernandez has a good team down there in Tampa to keep your eye on. And Blair Watson, who has been terrific off the bench, has the only three-point made basket for Maryland and hits a mid-range jump shot. They are looking for a spark to get them going. South Carolina has controlled the tempo today. Boston with the high flash. Pull up three. Cannot get it to go. Miller able to keep it alive to Stephanie Jones. There's a chance right here for Maryland to get a little momentum going into the fourth. This place is ready to erupt. Owusu, tough shot over Boston. Somebody's got to stop the ball. I think the team is playing a part for both teams, honestly, Beck. It looks like there's not a lot of hard basket cuts. Close out a little bit late. It's that early season, later in the game. You've been knocked around a little bit. Beal out to Harris. This is an opportunity, Matt, for the veterans to show their stuff. And here is Ty Harris. No. Miller, look at that burst. He's going to take it all the way and lay it up and in. What explosion up the floor. Trying to take advantage of seven straight missed shots for South Carolina. This is a, a not going to be a good piece of film tomorrow for Don Stanley's team. This is what you call a 92-foot drive for a touchdown. That's exactly what that was. No one hustled back. And remember I just said fatigue, talking about both teams. Scoreless now for three and a half minutes, South Carolina. And the double-digit lead has dissipated. A two-possession game. Tough drive down the middle of the floor by Destiny Henderson. Using that quickness to get by that first level. Good counter there, approaching a minute to go in the corner. Not the shot Maryland wanted. Watson trying to keep it alive. And it's a hell ball to South Carolina. Another hustle play by Faith Lasanis. She has made a lot of tough plays on that back row. Good hustle. Watch Henderson. This is the second time she's gone right down the middle to the front of the rim. Just so quick with the basketball in her hands. When she's quietly put together a nice afternoon, not only with the offense, but the defense on Mikesell. And uh, really taking away the three ball today for Maryland. 
called there on the Terps. I think Masonis is going to evolve into that role player that does all the, the tough play, sets the good screens, rebounds every time, defends her position, works in their rotations defensively. She can impact the game without the ball in her hands. Arrow looking to double team. Arrow picking up their effort on this end of the floor. Here goes baseline and draws the foul. Brenda Freeze's team has not played well on the offensive end, and certainly South Carolina has influenced that. But they're in this basketball game. This is the way they started, but yeah, hit 50%, but uh, they've gone cold since. They've never led in this game. We were tied early at eight all. And they've trailed by as many as 14 today. This two free throws. Good size. Do we get good size on the shooter on top? Running Mikesell off multiple screens. Taken away by Henderson. Coming up with another nice play. They have forced that one. And now that gives Maryland a chance. And if Miller was going to give that up, she should have given it up earlier. That's the third time she's had sort of an open court breakaway with somebody ahead of her and didn't pass it. This time, South Carolina gets to set their D. Five seconds to go in the quarter. Wusu finds Austin inside, missed another layup. Well, even though South Carolina only had one basket in the last five and a half minutes, Maryland couldn't chip away. And the Gamecocks take the lead into the fourth. Heading into the fourth quarter with a pair of national championship winning coaches. Dawn Staley and Brenda Freeze, who's going to make the right moves and make the right calls down the stretch? Well, they both are terrific for the game. There's no question about it. They both have over 20 years of head coaching experience, and they both are very influential in helping young coaches. Brenda a title in 2006, Dawn in 2017, and Kyla Charles, the and one. What a great ATO after timeout by Brenda Freeze. Kyla Charles was getting isolated on the elbow in the first half, and Maryland has not been able to get her to that spot on the floor. So they just clear out a side for her on an out of bounds play and let her go to work with her quickness and her ability to finish. Missed out on her 10th point there, and it's a Two possession game, down by as many as 14 in that third quarter. Leah Boston back out on the floor now for South Carolina, number four in black. Really good trap, really good matchup. Takes South Carolina deeper into their offensive options. It minimizes Boston's effect. See, she did not get a touch. Oh, and they get a second chance on the offensive rebound and a foul on the Turks. You've got to finish the defensive stance with a rebound. I mean, one of the things that Brenda Fries' teams have always been very good at is rebounding. And they've lost the rebounding battle thus far in the game. 40 to 33 on the glass so far, minus seven. Took the freshman out of Toledo, Ohio, was a finalist for National Player of the Year as a senior last year, and rated as the number one point guard in the country. Well, here's the thing, as the game continues to go on and it's just one or two possessions, South Carolina has Ty Harris. They know what they have, making decisions in a late game situation. She's been in plenty of big games. Maryland doesn't. 
because Owusu is a freshman. Doesn't have the big game experience yet. Masonis, the kick out. Charles took it right away from Boston. Held ball to South Carolina. Watch the strength of Charles right here. Boston secures the rebound, but Charles stays after and just rips it out of Boston's hands. Good hustle on the floor by Jones and Harris. Loose ball, everybody hits the deck, right? The kinds of plays that could decide this one. More full court pressure here from Maryland, and a little too aggressive for Owusu. And she will pick up her third. So uh, took one on the, on the nose. You know, I, I've watched Brenda Freeze for many years, and she has been very patient over there with her team. He's very much been a teacher. He's really tried to change the rhythm of the game with her defensive changes. I think the officials want to look at this. It was contact, it appeared, the elbow to the face. And the rip through. The officials are coming over to tell us that they're looking to see if it's an intentional foul. I think it's just a basketball play. I don't think there's anything that was done. Uh, you know, her, her, when you watch her swing the ball over the top of her head, her elbows, are not perpendicular to the floor. There is some parallel there, which Wusu, Wusu just got in too tight. The officials were quick to the monitor, Terrific and that's job. a good thing. Terri that's, that's what we need more of. Terrific job. Quick to the monitor, get your looks, and go. Well done by China Napier, Jenna Cross, and Tierra Cruz today. This would be my opportunity to insert that the men have the cylinder rule. You can't yes. invade the cylinder of a player. Well played. Good, good insertion. Good. Down on her backside. There's a sit. And the pass to no one in particular. And she fell down with the basketball in her hands. There was no deflection, I didn't think. So. Regardless, Maryland gets the ball back. Let's see if they can put some game pressure on South Carolina. South Carolina really hasn't felt any pressure in the game yet in terms of Maryland mounting a comeback. Again, they have taken away the three ball. In fact, just one three-pointer today for Maryland. That was with three minutes to go back in the first quarter. And that uh, three was on an offensive rebound. It was a kick for 14 today. Jones. Oh, that time it was the help from Kiki that got the block. Harris going to try herself. And knocked out of bounds to Maryland. Well, Ty Harris has been a lot more aggressive at trying to get into the paint and look for her opportunities for herself. Usually she's a, a distributor when she gets to the paint. Wusu. Looking for three, Miller, no. And Wusu does a good job of drawing help on the strong side corner. He gets got to make that three, and then the long rebound off the corner three gives South Carolina a breakout opportunity. They have been terrific today with the leak. And seeing that they've got the offensive glass and somebody tearing out the other way. Maruzzo trying to post up inside, has the position, and gets to the rim. One of the many ways that I think she can impact scoring for, for Maryland. With that big frame. Oh, as close as six. Oh, 
every time they start sniffing around, South Carolina is able to turn them away. Good switch. Cook. Good switch again. The help was there for Jones and a foul on Lee. With the reaching. No, Wusu can't get anything going on the top of the floor. The last time down, she made a nice penetration and a kick to three. So she might be thinking, I'm just going to take the smaller of the player down to the block, invert, and score. And that's what she does. I see if Kyla Charles just going to get a touch here. The preseason player of the year in the Big Ten has to give it up. Shona stepped inside, couldn't put it down. Good rebound by Cook. Approaching six minutes to go. The young South Carolina team trying to hit the road early and take down the favorites in the Big Ten this year. That's going to be a foul trying to box out Boston. And it's on Masonis. That's her third. Third on the team. Boy, good job by Cook to keep it alive. Another offensive rebound and a second chance. Harris, Herbert Harrigan, no. High contact on the shots. And it's out of bounds to Maryland. Again, Brenda Freeze without Shanice Lewis, her point guard from last year with a knee injury, without Zoe Young, uh, one of the McDonald's All-Americans in her freshman class with a knee injury. Who makes the right decisions for them? with the rebound. And the guards have done a good job of rebounding and it allows them to get up the floor in their transition game. Let's see if Boston gets a touch right here. She hasn't had a, a catch on the low block or in the paint. And they've missed 12 of their last 14 shots, but Maryland has been shooting it so poorly they have not been able to make a dent in the deficit. Boston doubled, has to give it up. Offensive rebound, Aaliyah. Going to the right side, around and out. Third chance here for South Carolina. They've had a couple of possessions where they are all over the offensive boards. And they will get possession and the quick timeout. 15 old boards for South Carolina. That's helped them to the eight-point lead. Hey, we got Sports Center coming up tonight at 11 Eastern with John Anderson and Kenny Main. They'll have post-game press conferences for you from around the NFL. Reactions to Patrick Mahomes' return against the Titans. They lost in the final minute of that one. An upset for Tennessee. And LeBron's on a mission to take back his crown and lead the Lakers back to the top of the NBA. All coming up, Sports Center 11 Eastern on ESPN and your ESPN app. Don't forget, we got more women's hoops for you tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, ESPN 2. It's Tennessee at Notre Dame. Kelly Jolly, three national championships as a player at Tennessee, getting her...
debut as the head coach. Well, they're 2-0, oh, actually. They've won two games already. Notre Dame is undefeated as well with a whole new look. Trying to beat the shot clock in a violation here in South Carolina. Some notable upcoming games for you. November 24th, you'll get a look at Connecticut, an NC State team that may be in the fight for the Final Four this year, and then Notre Dame-UConn December 8th. Don't forget, uh, coming up in January, the renewal of the Tennessee-UConn rivalry. That is coming back after a long hiatus. See if Maryland can pick up the energy a little bit. They've only made six baskets in the second half. Make that seven from Stephanie Jones. Four assists in the first half, just three here in the second for Maryland. And now they pick up some pressure, and there's a steal. Stepping on the sideline was Masonis. You can sense that maybe Maryland's found a little juice somehow to get their momentum going, and this is one way to do it. Reverse the ball, get a penetration, piece of the paint, wide open jump shooter, and it allows you to put your full court press on. Got the trap here on Cook, who's in trouble. Head ball. No, a timeout for South Carolina. That would have gone to Maryland with the arrow. The initial call in front of us was held ball, but the timeout called by the official standing over by Don Staley. Jenna Cross with a lot of confidence blowing that whistle, definitely communicating that this was going to be a timeout. Don Staley got the timeout before the jump ball. At least we're starting to see a little bit more energy and emotion out of Maryland. We yep. really haven't seen any in the game. South Carolina has done a terrific job controlling the tempo of this one. They have led pretty much the entire way, up by as many as 14 points. And they have really held Maryland uh, down offensively. They struggled to shoot the ball all afternoon. Well, I think their defense has been an issue for South Carolina has done a really good job of taking away first options for Maryland. Kyla Charles has been effective in certain spots on the floor. But Maryland's going to have to get it done with their defense here to finish this game. Who's got the guts down the stretch here in uh, this top 10 matchup, the earliest in a season that two top 10s have ever gotten together. And right now, South Carolina with the lead and a trip to the stripe for Leah Boston. See, here, here's one thing that I have learned watching these two teams, and that is that South Carolina knows what their identity is. They're going inside, they're playing through Boston, they're going to get her touches. She's effective on both ends at the front of the rim. And Maryland's still trying to figure it out. Brenda Fries with those injuries to the point guards. And a freshman point guard, we mentioned that at the beginning of the game, that who was going to be able to handle the, the, the big moments of the game? We're still going to find some of that out right here in the last 329. Yeah. Boston able to get that second one to go, and a Maryland team returning all five starters. And with a chip on their shoulder, Debbie, after back-to-back -back trips to the Final Four, they have been bounced early in each of the last four seasons. So really looking for something to prove as the season progresses to get themselves ready for a deeper run. And the drive there by Masonis. They have three freshmen on the floor right now. And a couple as well for South Carolina. Make that three for them as well. Well, five starters back with the number three ranked recruiting class. There's a lot of young talent from Maryland, so that's part of trying to figure out what their identity is going to be, blending the experience with the youth. And one of those young players for Maryland, Faith Masonis right here. Nice little crossover, gets into the middle of the defense and finishes the layup. Now, how many layups do we think Maryland missed so far in the game? Five or six. Yeah. Yeah. Deal with the miss. So here, here we go. We've talked about they've gotten to within six, but not closer. And even if Beal hits this next free throw, they will have a chance to narrow the margin on their next possession. Uh, this is a situation that Brenda Fries was talking to us at shoot around today. Not having a one and one, having two free throws. There's no pressure on the first shot. Beal missed two shots last time she was at the line. <laughs> I like the one and one two cups. I'm still not, I'm not, I'm I'm still not, not sure if we it. found anybody that likes it this way, but 
No, I haven't found That's it. That's what we're going with. Hey, the Phil Knight Invitational is coming up in Portland on Tuesday night. Oregon and Memphis. And uh, the top-rated recruit on the men's side, James Wiseman, if he is still eligible to play, he'd be out there for the Tigers. He played in their opener. It'll be a foul off the ball, Beth, and Kiki Herbert Harrigan. Trying to defend Kyla Charles, who's working for a position on the block. So that was their last foul to give. The next foul for South Carolina. Oh, no, no. What? Yeah, one more. Yeah, they have three team fouls. That, there you go. There's the fourth foul, Beth. And now our graphics got it there. Four fouls. Third on Boston. Miller leaves it off for Jones. And another missed opportunity for Maryland. And then two free throws coming at the other end for Carolina. Well, not that it was planned that way, but Beal has struggled at the free throw line. So you commit this foul, and she's going to get a chance for two free throws. She's got seven points. She's actually today been pretty good. Seven for ten at the line. She's gotten to the line a lot. Mm -hmm. See if Maryland can put a little game pressure on South Carolina and Dawn Stanley's shot-making ability. I, I don't feel like they have done that yet. Bill gets one of two. The South Carolina's defense has been really good this afternoon. You expect defenses to be ahead of offenses this time of year. Back up to an eight-point lead. Jones over Boston short. They just seem to be getting all the 50-50 the balls right now. South Carolina, another big play. Wide open shot for Stephanie Jones. A nice dish by Owusu, who has given the ball to shoot shooters. They just haven't made shots. So Zaya Cook, the freshman to the line, she'll shoot a couple. Maryland shooting less than 30% in the game. Very uncharacteristic of the Terps and a tip of the cap to South Carolina for the defensive effort. Really started with the five blocks in the first half by Boston. Even though she doesn't have a swat since, her presence is still felt. Every time they get into the paint. Good shot fake by Owusu. You got to get a stop here. Remember that, not that stop score mentality. You got to get a steal score here if you're Maryland. You got to keep your hands off. Another two minutes to go. Harris. Kiki on the drive, just their second basket of the quarter. They've been solid at the free throw line here in the fourth. And it's back up to a 10 point game. Owusu rattles it in and out. Charles trying to get away from Boston and had to fade on the shot. Ty Harris totally in charge right here. A wooden award nominee. He's on the Naismith list as well. Gets it back from Beal. Three ball is good. That's what you get from your senior point guard who's been in the big moments, who's played in a lot of big games, who's confident down the stretch. The winner of a national championship a couple of years ago. The first three of the game for South Carolina, and it's a big one. Beal with a nice dish. Plenty of time for Harris to line it up. Coaches check to see if this will be a full timeout. So after Maryland gets to within six, South Carolina responds with a 9-2 run. Let me just reiterate that it's early, right? I mean, we haven't seen this kind of matchup 
early in November. This is uh, two big time teams playing in a big time game. And Maryland just didn't play well. They didn't shoot it well. And South Carolina had a, a lot to do. They've influenced a lot of the decision making that Maryland struggled with offensively. But that, that just means it's November, it's early, and both these teams have a lot in front of them. Maryland picked to win the Big Ten. They'll drop slightly in the rankings. They won't be number four tomorrow morning. South Carolina could make a nice little move here with a big road win and a notch in the SEC's belt. Gamecocks also have non-conference games against Baylor and UConn coming up later in the year. Then it may come down in the SEC to that Texas A&M game right at the back end of the schedule, their final regular season game. And then a chance to stay home the entire postseason. SEC tournament in Greenville, first and second round at homes, at home, and then a regional in the NCAA tournament in Greenville. In front of the nation's largest fan base. Finally a three for Maryland. It's their second of the day, two for 16 from downtown. I know Brenda Freeze will go back to tinkering. She'll figure it out. She'll get a couple of players healthy, hopefully. Working that clock beautifully. Boston didn't put the ball on the floor. Break away here from Miller. He'll get the layup. 23 seconds to go. And the Terps work a little late magic. Gonna be tough against Ty. She is fouled. As it stands, it would be Maryland's seventh straight home loss against a top 10 opponent. A stretch of seven plus years. Well, these are the kinds of games, right, Debbie? You, you, you get your team's attention and uh, Practice tomorrow will be a little more intense. You gotta earn it in practice. Yes. Uh, it's a competitive group Brenda Freeze has, and I bet she will figure it out because she usually does. Dawn Stanley and her staff, tremendous job getting this team ready. And Dawn has remarked all early season about how unselfish her group is, how competitive they are, how um, they want to win. And they don't care how they go about doing it, who gets the credit, they really are a connected group early. Abusu to the line. 16 points, seven rebounds, three assists for Ashley today. The free throw attempt discrepancy is South Carolina plus 18 today. Well, they were a more aggressive team in the second half. Their size and their depth up front is going to be a factor all season long until somebody forces them to have to make some threes. So that'll do it. South Carolina, big win on the road. The number eight Gamecocks upset fourth ranked Maryland. 63 to 54, the final. Well, I think South Carolina has a pretty good idea about their identity this season in terms of what they can do with their depth, with their talent, with their size on the inside. Aaliyah Boston set the tone early on both ends of the floor with her ability to score in the paint and her ability to defend and block shots at the rim. 14 points, seven rebounds, five block shots for her. Ty Harris with 13. And a terrific effort on the road for the Gamecocks as they beat Maryland 63 to 54. Alongside Debbie Antonelli, I'm Beth Mullins and from our entire ESPN crew, thanks so much for being with us. So long from Maryland.